Hey guys, it's Aaron aka Grishnell, and these are some strange times. Um, I'm coming to you from my house, but it's, uh, I'll, I'll get you everything, so it's, uh, I'm here this morning, but I'm about to go into work at noon. It's, uh, it's Friday. It's my last day of work for the week. I have the weekend off. And, um, it's the end of our first real week of, um, shelter in place here in the Bay Area. A, um, obviously this coronavirus thing is very serious. If you're, if you're not there yet, I don't know what it's going to take to convince you. I was on, uh, my family and I, we have a WhatsApp chat. And, um, you know, last night we were talking and my mom gets on and she says, I don't think it's that big of a deal. I travel all the time. I've probably already got it and got over it. It's just the flu. It's... Uh, My dad's a, a MAGA hat wearing, Trump trading, riding, staunch Republican. He finally started taking it seriously about the time Trump did, which was Monday. We've obviously known about this thing uh, for months. Uh, since December. Um, I know. I've been following it since January. And I was busy running a political campaign from January through March until Super Tuesday. Uh, I was a campaign manager for a local county uh, official. And we won. We got uh, two-thirds of the vote. We won. So, feels good. And I went back to work at the county about two weeks ago, which was uh, when we were really starting to ramp up the uh, local response when we were seeing cases. And um, the same week I came back, the second day I was back, our county declared a state of emergency. No, no, we'd done it before. We um, enhanced the state of emergency. They'd done the state of emergency before I came back, uh, but they'd enhanced it. And then they've enhanced it since. And they've given the sheriff um, extra powers as well. Right now it's a misdemeanor to leave the house for non-essential functions. On Monday, I went to the store Monday morning. I wanted to go at 8.30. I didn't go on the weekend because I knew people were starting to panic. Um, I still had to go to work, right? I'm an essential worker on the back of my work badges. It says, um, I'm a disaster service worker and this is a disaster. And I went to work on Monday or, uh, I went to the store before going to work. Uh, they were supposed to open at eight 30 and they did not. Um, uh, they had a sign saying that they would open at nine 30 because they needed extra time to restock. So I went to work and I got started on the things I needed to do and I went back and I got there at 9.30 and there was a line around the block. Um, and it was madness. I've never seen anything like it. You know, the good news is that uh, we're prepared here for a while. For us, um, you know, and the good news is that the supply chain's coming. Like, it's it's nothing's happening to the supply chain you guys like the same amount of food that we had last week is still the same amount of food that we have this week and the week before it's people panicking that are driving this it's people buying more than they usually buy that's you know our supply chain's not built for that it provides a regular steady amount of food 
that we consume regularly. And so when all of a sudden everyone's like, toilet paper, oh my gosh. Can't handle that, it's a shock. You know, and restock and the supply chain continues to pump into it. And you know, the thing is everyone bought their fucking toilet paper for the whole year. No one needs toilet paper for the rest of the year. So all the toilet paper that's on the shelves now that just has been stocked, uh, no one needs because it's, you know, it's hopefully that's the case. But Jesus Christ. So it's really weird uh, going to work when no one's going to work. I mean, people are working from home, but, like, no one's getting in their car going to work. You know, if you're doing it, uh, it's because you've been deemed an essential worker. And I have been. So I'm in the office uh, Monday through Friday from 12 to 5. Uh, and a coworker of mine covers the office from nine to or from eight to noon. That way we don't have to. That way we don't overlap over there. So I just sit there in the office all all day, right? Uh, you know why is it essential to have me sitting in an office? Well, um, obviously we're a local uh, elected official, and uh, we run the county. We have the health department. We have the sheriff's department. We run the jails. We run the social services. And my boss uh, chairs the social service committee here. Uh, so things like food stamps, the food bank, uh, CalFresh, you know, Medi-Cal, like your medical benefits, all the, all the social safety net programs, general assistance, you know, cash aid, and like the foster care system, like adult protective services. Every... So we're running that. And those systems are more important than ever. This is. exactly what they're built for and they're going to be so stressed and so governance and making sure those systems are running and that everything's happening that needs to happen is essential right now answering the phones when somebody calls the office and actually needs to talk to a person a real human answers the phone in our office and we will help uh, with with trying to figure out what's going on and we can't help everybody but like you know if it's a county issue we're pretty good at it I was going to work yesterday and uh, my my neighbor you know I waved as I was getting in the car and they said are you going to work I said yeah said stay home I talked to my sister she's a registered nurse she works in, in the the NICU unit with uh, preemie babies and uh, she hasn't, she left work a couple years ago. She was gonna be a stay-at-home mom and, and uh, almost immediately went through um, an awful divorce and that just finished. She just finalized it on um, last week. Thank God, because the court systems are shut down. There's no court. And I have encouraged her to go back to work as a nurse. I think that it's more important than ever that our medical systems have all the support that they need. That they have all the personnel with all the training and that everybody mobilizes who has training and can be of service now. That's what we need. see if she does it. I've started taking a journal. I've written about 20 pages in the last uh, week and it's really good. Uh, 
being able to dissect and my 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 thoughts and have a, a moment being able to um, track what's happening uh, and, and log it down every day because every day is new every day there's something new and it's it's I don't want to forget The, uh, the expression I keep coming back to, though, the expression I keep coming back to is that adversity doesn't build character, it reveals it. And we're about to go through more adversity than our species has seen in any of our lifetimes. It's not going to build the character of us as a species, as a nation, as individuals. It's going to reveal what's there. I know on the national stage we're a fucking nightmare. That statement holds true for Donald Trump more than anybody. And he insists every single day to call it the Chinese virus because he doesn't want to take responsibility. He has said that he takes no responsibility for the lack of testing in the United States of America. Buck should stop with him. But it's everybody's fault but his. Adversity doesn't build character, it reveals it. What's it gonna reveal?